If today's attempt at downplaying the president's Russia tweet veered into the comical at times, this next issue has not. It is flat out disturbing. It happened at a Trump rally yesterday, and it was something the president encouraged people to do, as he often does, something he's repeatedly encouraged people to do. And I'm going to show you the video in a moment, but what you are going to see are otherwise respectable people, fellow citizens, fellow Americans, people you'd say hello to on the street, shouting profanities, making obscene gestures, emptying their rage on members of the press covering last night's Trump rally in Tampa. Take a look. So it gets worse, as you'll see in a moment. One of the things that's alarming about this, besides the very real potential that this kind of anger can easily lead to violence, is that instead of taking steps to tamp down the anger, curtail the protesters, even just admonish them, the President of the United States has encouraged them. He even retweeted some of the video out to his millions of followers. And if you think anyone in the White House has the courage or the conviction to criticize what the President is encouraging, you would be mistaken. Here's Sarah Sanders generically condemning violence, something that of course, did not happen last night, thankfully, but saying nothing about what did actually happen. The president condemns and denounces any group that would uh, incite violence against another individual um, and certainly doesn't support uh, groups that would promote that type of behavior. So she was trying to steer the conversations toward far-right conspiracy theory groups like QAnon, which we'll talk about more. And even then, as you'll see, she lumped them together with the press, suggesting there's some kind of equivalence between the two. In fact, there was another reporter in the briefing pointed out, that's not the issue. At issue, or at least not for now, it's not the issue. The issue at hand is the kind of open display of rage last night that the president is encouraging in rallies and on Twitter. Now, here's some of the video that CNN's Jim Acosta put up on Instagram. I want to play it through a couple of times. First, as the camera saw it, then with portions highlighted, so you just get a better idea of what Jim and other reporters were surrounded by last night in Tampa while simply doing their constitutionally protected jobs. So that's what it sounded like. Now, I, I just want to play it again with certain things highlighted because, uh, you know, it, it's easy to lose it in the crowd. It starts with a man shouting, F the media. And again, everyone you see here, there could be your neighbor. They could teach your kids science. They could be in your carpool. They could be saying prayers next to you in church. But at these rallies, that potential churchgoer might be raising the middle finger, shouting, as another man does, stop lying, stop lying into the camera. Okay. Now, there's another lady who first raises one middle finger. This lady right here is very charming. Um, then she raises both fingers, shouting, you suck, you suck. You're only seeing less than a minute of it, but this kind of thing went on a whole lot longer. And again, the president saw fit to encourage it on Twitter. And again, Sarah Sanders did not see fit to just condemn it simply and without reservation. The president, as I just said, does not support uh, violence against anyone and or anything. And we've been very clear um, every single time we've been asked about that. When it comes to the media, the president does think that the media holds a responsibility. Uh, we so fully support a free press, but there also comes a high level of responsibility with that. The me media routinely reports on classified information and government secrets that put lives in danger and risk valuable national security tools. This has happened both in our administration and in past administrations. One of the worst cases was the reporting on the U.S. ability to listen to Osama bin Laden's satellite phone in the late 90s. Because of that reporting, he stopped using that phone and the country lost valuable intelligence. So as for the last part of what you just said there, the bit about reporting accurately and fairly, yes, certainly uh, people in the media get things wrong. I've gotten things wrong, not often, but we do. And when that happens, we correct it, sometimes within seconds or minutes, as fast as we can. The same cannot be said of Sarah Sanders or the president or others in the White House. Keep it honest, though the example Sarah Sanders mentioned there about Osama bin Laden and the phone, 
That's actually not true. The Washington Post fact checkers ran it all down 13 years ago. By the time the story Sarah Sanders was apparently referring to ran in September of 1998, bin Laden had apparently already stopped using his satellite phone. In fact, CNN's Peter Bergen, who's reported extensively on this, it was early as 1997, met uh, with bin Laden. Bin Laden's men were already concerned about electronic surveillance back by 1997. Quoting the Post headline now, file the bin Laden phone leak under urban myths. Now, we'll see if Sarah Sanders corrects herself in a few minutes or a few hours or a few days or whenever she may have a next press conference. I doubt it. We'll see if she holds herself to the same standard that we hold ourselves to. Joining us now is CNN senior political analyst David Gergen. I mean, you know, I, I, I always try to use the example if, if the president was a Democrat and you had, uh, you know, a Democratic president encouraging people at rallies to scream at reporters. Yes. Reporters would be outraged about it. I mean, if they were screaming at Fox News, you know, get off the air. And if any, when anybody does that, that's abhorrent. Yeah, I agree. But there are some reporters of other networks who are coming to the defense of CNN on this, and Jim Acosta in particular. Uh, I, I, you know, the publisher of the New York Times went to see the president uh, recently, and he made the point to him, which I think is exactly right. The whole charge is about fake news. It's very, very disturbing. But the serious issue is when the president starts calling the press enemies of the people. Right. That's an old phrase, comes out of a Stalinist background. Uh, and it really makes them sort of traitors to the country. And there were some hints of people, reporters right. being called traitors last night. And if you put that together, the enemies of the people together, along with a rally, which, which has a mob quality to it, and then along with a culture of gun violence, that's a very combustible mix. Well, also, Sarah Sanders then, I mean, talking yeah. about enemies of the people, traitors, right. she's talking about revealing classified information. I mean, there are so many examples of reporters holding back on reporting things at the request of intelligence agencies so that sources and methods are protected or lives are not in danger or operation uh, actually yeah. put in, in risk. I, I, I've been involved in many occasions when the head of the CIA or someone, if they say the uh, Secretary of Defense or the President himself, might call a publisher and say, would you please withhold this? Right. Uh, and because here's what's at, at stake. You know, when we had our hostages in Iran, you know, for those 400 and plus days, no leaks. They were protected the whole time by press who knew they were in there, mm. but didn't want to endanger their lives. So we, we, we have a, a president, when he comes in, takes an oath to protect the constitutional rights of all Americans. And what this president and this White House seem to not to accept is that that's their responsibility at these rallies to ensure that a free press can exercise the day-to-day -day, uh, It's also so interesting because, you know, the president has spoken about the importance of the Second Amendment right. uh, many times. You expect the president, and again, I know Donald Trump is a rule breaker and that's why he, he got elected and people want to see things shaken up. But you do expect the president to defend the Constitution of the United States exactly. and to explain the intricacies of the Constitution and the sometimes right. uncomfortable difficulties that the Constitution, uh, you know, enforces uh, on, on the country. And that's not something this president has done or really seems willing to do in I'm, any way. I'm, I'm afraid not. I mean, it's as if he's read parts of the Constitution, like the Second Amendment, but is not terribly familiar with the history of other parts of it, like the First Amendment. But I, I, I will tell you this, Anderson. What we saw last night is what we saw frequently in Sarah Palin rallies way back when in the early part of it. And John McCain, who was her, you know, was her running mate and the presidential nominee, went to, out, went to those rallies and said, stop it. Mm. Let's end this. That's the president's responsibility. And unless he stops this soon, I will tell you, if there is violence against any reporter that's tied to this, the blood is going to be on his hands. I, I mean, it, it, it seems... You know, uh, I mean, one doesn't want to predict anything, but uh, I mean, the idea of violence occurring, somebody who's disturbed, you know, being motivated by this, rightly or wrongly, uh, in their, you know, certainly in their mind, they would be right. But, but right. even if it's not what the president said, right. just this kind of a mob atmosphere, violence, <laughs> it doesn't it, take much. It, it doesn't take much. And now, we, now we've got this, this new element of the QAnon, and you're, right, you're yeah, be, which we're, we're reporting on be tonight as well. Which, you know, there are a lot of people, I mean, not a lot, but, but a number of people there last night with shirts and, you know, with or, and, on it. It's strange, but there, but, but there are a lot of conspiracy theorists there. Right. Conspiracy theorists are known to act on them. Yeah. And sometimes use violence as in the pizzeria situation. Yeah. Uh, David Gergen, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much.